ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل بدعة ضلالة The last question so the Sheikh asked me was the difference between the Hadith Shad and Ziyad Al-Thiqa. A Shad Hadith and a Hadith that is Ziyad Al-Thiqa. A Shad Hadith, Ikhwan, in, in the science of Hadith, the, an authentic narration must meet five conditions. The saw the Senate, the chain must be connected, as we mentioned earlier, a Muslim, a chain from, connected from the first narrator all the way to the end of the chain of narration, in this case, to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It must also be by the narration of the truthful and precise. So those are two conditions, truthful, sadiq, and vabit. So they must be truthful, upright, And they must be precise. The precision is of two types, double sada or double kita, memorizing by heart and memorizing, or preserving your knowledge well in books. So again, connect the chain of narration by the narration of a trustworthy, upright, precise narrator. It cannot have any shaduv, any contradiction. So that's shad. Shad means it's contradictory to that which is stronger than it. Or more in number than it. So, for example, the client, if a trustworthy narrator has to be trustworthy, if a trustworthy narrator narrates something that contradicts other narrators that are stronger than him or more in number than him in strength, then he is considered that instant shaft, the narration is shaft, therefore it is rejected. However, the Adam of Fitha is now when a trustworthy narrator doesn't contradict the other narrators he simply adds something to it that they didn't hear so for example there may have been several different sittings for example and maybe that particular student heard something in, in one sitting that the other student didn't hear and he just mentions he just adds what he heard or what he saw from the teacher that the others didn't hear or see he's trustworthy So therefore, we take that additional wording from him because he's only adding something that the others didn't relate or narrate. However, if we know that they were all in the same sittings, for example, all of them were together in the same sittings, and one particular narrator narrates something that the others didn't narrate, and they're stronger than him, then that instance is Shav. He has contradicted them. And so in that instance, that's the difference between Shav And between the other that was the last question he asked for him in the, in the hospital. The example of, this, uh, of a shad hadith, I start a little trouble before I leave. <laughs> example of a shad, hey, you knew I was getting ready to do it. You knew I was getting ready to do it. So, the moving of the finger and the shad, let's do it, let's do it. So, the narration. And the Prophet said, "A shall be sababati that he pointed with his index finger, and in the wording it says, 'Well, you have rigu and he moved it. However, that addition was only reported by Zaida in the Kudama when narrated. He contradicts 13 other narrators." And Zayd in the, the Qudamah, by the way, is not much on sense. He's from the highest levels of, of precision and memorization. That's not, we're not going to play around with Zayd, Zayd in the Qudamah. But look what he contradicts. Sufyan ibn Uriyana, Amir al-Mu'mini for the Hadith. Sufyan al-Thawri, Amir al-Mu'mini for the Hadith. Shu'ab ibn al-Hajjaj, Amir al-Mu'mini for the Hadith. Abdullah al Mubarak, I mean, I go on. So the point here, Ikhwan, is that out of all of those narrators, all of them narrated that the Prophet said, pointed with his fingers, only, his fingers to me, only Zaki that mentions that he moved it. So he contradicts those who are more than him in number and those who are stronger than him in number. He alone, right? Now, Sheikh Wana Sheikh Mukta said, if that's not Shad, then Shad doesn't exist. 
If that, if that narration is not shab, that wording is not shab, then what's a shab narration? It fits every criteria of a shab narration. Shaykh al-Bani, in Tamam al he actually, in this issue, he praises a book that was written by one of the students in the Maj Ahmed Sa'id, Shaykh al Shaykh that actually sought from him to compile this work, Ahmed Sa'id, strong in Ba'ath and research. He was actually my research teacher there in the Maj. He compiled a book on the moving of the finger in which he gathered together all of the chains, many of the chains of narration and sifts through them and, and brings the kalam of the ulama. And as Shaykh Mukhtar mentioned in the introduction, again, if this is not a shad hadith, then a shad hadith doesn't exist. So Shaykh al-Bani actually mentions this book in Salam al-Minna and he praises it. He says, indeed, it's a book you can see the author was diligent in gathering the chains of narration and sifting through them with the work that we hope that Allah will reward him from for lacking. <laughs> However, and of course, Sheikh Nasser goes, you know, goes on and, and gives his position. And he says it's from Ziyadat al Fiqh. Basically, Sheikh Nasser argues it's from Ziyadat al Fiqh. The problem here, again, Ikhwan, is that we, as Sheikh Mukbul and the others have mentioned, that we do not have any anything to show that he heard something outside of those circles, of those formal students of, the, of their teacher and therefore in this instance one would have to rule that with being shad as opposed to the actual thiqa in the most